Praise the Lord. Uh, man, you know, I've got what I believe God wants me to, to share, but um, I want what he wants. Man, that song was my testimony. That was my testimony. It, it, it is my testimony. Not was, it is my testimony. He said, are you seeking me? And I gave him a list. And uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to church. I'm paying my tithes. I'm reading the Bible. I'm... And he didn't want the list. He wanted my heart. And uh, found out that seek means crave. And it was, oh, man, the revelation just started pouring. And I realized that I wasn't, doing, I wasn't giving him that. I wasn't going for that because I knew how to do that in, in, in sports, but I didn't, wasn't doing that. I really wasn't seeking him. I was a Christian. I'm going to heaven. But I wasn't seeking him. I wonder how many Christians are really not seeking him. And remember in the Bible, it says he was looking for one who would seek him. Found out that it was that. And so, man, does that change your life. But um, I need to review because we have the pastor's row right here. <clears throat> and uh, if I can't finish it, they will. Um, but um, uh, it was, you know, years ago, you know, there was the, uh, the uh, pandemic and then all the things that had happened. And so we're, I don't know how many years we were pastoring. We're not, we're still kind of newbies. But um, been in the ministry, travel ministry, itinerant ministry for a long time, but, um, and then baseball before that. But uh, when all that happened, it seemed like, you know, perilous times was coming, <laughs> and it uh, seems like we're in it. And, and uh, so we went to God and, and said, we want what you want. We, we know that we can get a sermon out of here and a series out of here. But, uh, out of the word, but we want what you want, and, and man, when you, when you ask, you shall receive, and so, and, and we even told him, we said, hey, if we, if we don't get a message, we just praise and worship, that'll be great, let the Holy Ghost have his way, and, and uh, we were ready for that, but we're not going to do our thing, we're done with that, because our vision on our church says we are a church in the last days that is not moved by man, is moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, that's, uh, that's our vision, and that's what we're going by. And so we seek, sought God, and we heard, <laughs> and, uh, and here it came. And one of the things that he did was he, you know, the Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance. And not just, I'm finding out, the Word, which is, he will, thank God. But he brought something to my remembrance of when I went to... Uh, <clears throat> college, and of course, being Billy's boy, y'all know, uh, I was uh, drilled on what not to listen to and not to receive from college professors, and and y'all know what I'm talking about. I was drilled, so I'm going in there with all these guards, you know, and it was, it was uh, psychology 101, psychology. Those that's weird. Those those are the weirdo. Anyway, that that was my thinking. And I find out later that psychology, there's nothing wrong with psychology, but what psychology in the world does is they only deal with two parts of the man, and they leave out the most important, the spirit. They deal with the mind and the flesh, the body, but they leave out the spirit, which is the most important. And if you, and if you don't leave out the spirit, then that psychology is good. Psycho psychology can be good. So psychology 101 of the world, I'm going into it. And then years later, the Lord wants to talk to me about psychology, uh, uh, spiritual psychology 101. Now, a lot of y'all were here, and I go in, and I got all these guards, and the professor goes on a huge white screen, and he puts this on the white screen, okay? And it was way bigger. The wall was about, the, the screen was about the size of the church, and, and the dot was probably the same size, and so... I'm thinking if this is psychology, I'm going to ace this. I'm going to pass this. I'm, I'm cool, Mom. We're good. I got it down. And I, you know, I'm thinking, go ahead and give me the A after my answer. I come from Collinsville, Oklahoma. I can answer this one. He says, what is it? And I said, I see a black dot. And he shakes his head no. And he asks somebody, what? And uh, so everybody 
said some form of a black dot, circle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so after a few of those, he says, I asked everybody or a lot of people in here, and nobody gave me the correct answer, the correct answer. And black dot's the correct answer. Well, there's many correct answers. You have to give me the, the best, the most correct answer. I'm like, man, I don't get psychology. All of them are correct. I want credit for my correct answer. <laughs> I'm just not raised that way, man. So anyway, uh, he said uh, the correct answer is the dominant image of the page. And the dominant image of the page, which nobody, nobody told me the dominant image of the page, is the white space. But there's a black dot there, I know, but the dominant image is the white space. Okay. Years later, we're seeking God. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher. I didn't know the pandemic. I didn't know all of this was going to happen. And we're going after it. We're going after it no matter what. The Lord says to me in my prayer, I'm the white space. Oh, come on now. Don't get, Richard, don't get there where you think you know it all. <laughs> See, now I can't coach you and take you that means you're, you, you've hit your ceiling. All right. He, know, he knows I'm joking. Because that man's got a lot of knowledge, I'm telling you. And uh, <laughs> let's just keep it simple. All right? Can we keep it simple? God says, I'm the white space. I am, in other words, what is he saying? I'm the dominant image. My dominion. My good. Y'all can take this wherever it's feeding you right now. I mean, seriously, let it do that. It's my goodness. Who? His love. His mercy. His grace. Who? It's where, didn't he say, abide in me and I'll abide in you? That's in the white space. And the black dots come. Well, where do they come from? Well, the enemy brings in them. They're a distraction. And they come in all shapes and sizes. They might come in a form of politics. They might come in the form of the price of gas. They might come in, are y'all are with me? They might come in the form of, of your sister. We learned that this morning. Mary and Martha. Mary goes straight to the feet, gets in the right position. She's where she's, She's, you want to talk about white space, she's so close to him and his presence, there ain't even, black dots could be going everywhere, and she ain't, she don't see. So the closer you get to God, the less, the less black dots matter. They'll be there. We live in a world of negativity. And, and Martha doing nothing wrong. Fixing a meal for Jesus, that's a good thing. But it wasn't the better thing, Jesus said. And it wasn't the needful thing. And she chose the right, better, needful thing on positioning herself. And, and so Martha says what? Jesus, don't you see that my sister is a black dot? <laughs> Martha, 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 you've got a lot of black dots, don't you? You worry, and what did he say? You... Uh, you worry about many things, and that's what, you're troubled and worried about many things. That's what black dots will do. And the enemy comes in with distractions of black dots. Brother Hagen lived a life in the white space. He chose to, and it didn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and say it again. Can I, it, the ones who were there this morning, can I tell that story again? He, li he chose to live there, and he teaches my mama to live there. Well, mama reads the, the love chapter and this and that, and, I, you know, the, and, and so she puts all the cards up. You know, they were everywhere in our house, and I watched the transformation of mom into that. And, and, but Brother Hagen lived there. Can, is it possible to live there? Because that's where victory is. That's where our true identity is, is in the white space. But man, we will black dot, we'll black dot, 
Oh my goodness, black dots. Have you heard about the black dots? <laughs> Every day, black dots, black dots. I mean, think of the, the 12 spies. The, two, the majority come back with a negative black dot. And two are going, no, we can do this. God, we'll fight all of our battles. Let's go. And so God is searching for people who will live in this space. I'm the white space. Sure, there's distress. And Brother Hagen, mom tells a story, and she told me not, not to say who the people were. Uh, the men have heard this, and the, well, everybody probably but three people have heard this. <laughs> who wasn't here this morning? Okay, all right, all right. So, uh, so times of uh, social media were different back then, and it was just the start of Rhema. And there, there was, uh, our, in the beginning years, I should say, of Rhema. And uh, there was um, uh, a, uh, a man from, a, uh, oh, about the, the, from a college, a, a, yeah, a professor from college, a Christian college that wrote a book about he, uh, that Brother Hagen was uh, a false prophet. And so a certain magazine got a hold of it, and they put the article out. And then uh, a certain minister on television had spoken it publicly. And so back then, that was the social media. And when people heard it, they believed it. And so mom and the staff didn't know what to do. What are we going to do? Just give me the end. This is a huge blow. And I'm sure the enemy was trying to stop Rama and everything else, stop what's going on. And he comes in, <clears throat> and he sits down, and he does his thumbs, <laughs> and they're like, what is it? And, he, and he's just kind of looking with a faraway look, and he says, isn't Jesus wonderful? And smiles. How can somebody say that in that time of their life? How is that possible? That's a gigantic black dot. But he still chooses the dominant white space up here. He chooses. He says, isn't Jesus wonderful? And they're like, yeah, but. And um, he says, let's do what the Bible says to do. And they pray for those who persecute them, bless those who curse them. And they did. Long story short, I can get in, but uh, the man who wrote the book died one week later of a severe heart attack in the classroom at the university in front of the students. Died. Did God do that? No. The enemy was a loud place. <clears throat> the um, the uh, magazine folded uh, within a month, and then the minister fell publicly and and, um, but, uh, but here's what I say. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Now that knowledge, this is what we're talking about. That's not head knowledge because, uh, uh, first Corinthians 13 says you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you not, if you don't have love, you're nothing. So it can't be head knowledge, book knowledge. So my people are perishing, perishing from some lack of some kind of knowledge well, what does not perish, and that's love, and that's God, and people who don't know love don't know God, First John, and they perish. Who are perishing? My people. He didn't say the world, the sinners, the backslider. He says, my people are perishing for a lack of knowledge, then it should be our goal, our aim, our everything we have to find out this knowledge, and that's what Paul says, make it your aim. Make it your great quest in life to find this love. What love? The same love that can come in and in the middle of a humongous black dot to try to ruin your life and ruin the lives of others and ruin your ministry. And he comes in and says, Ha! Isn't Jesus wonderful? All four, here's three that come up against him, all four were his people. Three perished, or their ministries perished. 
But one, we know the, the out, we know what we got results of Rhema right here. Amen. And so the Lord says, focus on the white space. Focus on me. Black dots are going to come. Learn to focus on me. Who is me? Love. No more perishing. I don't know if you're into perishing. I'm not into perishing. <laughs> Brother Hagen would get treated, mistreated, talked about, this about. He says, you know what? They can say what they want to say. They can do what they want to do. I like being healthy too much. I like walking in health too much to not get out of love. Jesus told the, told the lawyer, everything hangs on him. And so after that come about, the, he reminds me of I'm the white space and the black dot. What do you see? We got guys now wearing t-shirts. The book is coming out. The movie's coming. No, I don't know about the movie. But anyway. <laughs> but it's, Brother Copeland gets me on his, and, and we put it on TV. We, we, I mean, this thing is just, it's, God is doing this. And he's doing it at this time. I'm the dominant image. I know, but what about the black dot? What do you see? What do you see? <clears throat> In the midst of this, the Lord says to me, I want you to do something. I'm going to dare you. He gives me a dare. And it was, I knew it was a double dog dare. I don't know if you've ever had a double dog. No, double dog dares don't get the emotion. <laughs> it's the triple dog dare. <laughs> They've been taught. It's the triple dog there that will make you put your tongue on that flagpole. <laughs> and I got a double dog there from God. And, he, and what he meant was, now I mean you to do this. <clears throat> and he said, I want you to fast. And I didn't like that. I'm not really into fasting. I mean, I believe it. And I've done it. And I'll do it. Are y'all with me? When I'm led to do it. But I just didn't, not at the time, I didn't really want to fast. I was kind of hungry at the time. But anyway, <laughs> he said, uh, he said, I'm not talking about food. And I'm like, woof. He said, I want you to fast negativity. He said, the black dots are negative, negativity. And I want you to fast negativity for a week. He says, if you fast negativity for a week, I guarantee you, you will see results, you will see power, you will hear clearer, you'll be led. He, uh, he said, this is what I'm talking about, the white space. Negative and the black is the seen. The white space is the unseen. Faith is unseen. The thing's not seen. Are you with me? But the things that are seen are going to pop up all the time, but I don't want you to focus on them, don't want you to dwell on them, don't want you to camp out there on them. I don't want you to meditate on them. I don't want you to talk about them. I don't care if it's your football team that's not making the correct calls of the coach. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's, uh, uh, I, come on now, I mean seriously. This, this, this is one of mine. And, and whether that makes me a better or not worse Christian, that doesn't matter. It was the little things that I could work on and practice on that would help me with the much needed bigger thing. Are y'all with me? So I went on this negative, negativity fast for a week. And I thought, huh, Chip Brim, are you kidding? Champions for Christ, Billy's boy. <laughs> There's not a lot of negativity in there. And so I go about it, told Candy, we, 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 we do it. And man, here it comes. They were there. It was all in there. There was more negativity than I, I didn't think I had it in there. And it was there. And there would be conversations like, honey, did you hear what? Nothing. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> oh, and it would be several times. It was like, wow. And one lady I told uh, this morning at church, she goes, I, and, and I didn't, I, I wouldn't preach it to my church or give them the dare unless I had went through it. And, and, and uh, so I double dog dared the church and to go on a one-week fast, and one lady came up to me and says, I'm so mad at you. Why? <laughs> because everything I say is negative. <laughs> I said, darling, don't you understand? You wouldn't even acknowledge that. You wouldn't even have known that until this challenge or dare came. And now that you know, now that you know, my people perish for a lack of knowing. 
So what, black dots? Let's talk about the white slave. You want to, you want to know something? Isn't Jesus wonderful? Hey, you got a black dot? Big whoop. I got news for you. Isn't Jesus wonderful? That's what mama would do. Mama would camp out. She said, I would try to tell her about the black dots that are going on. <laughs> Richard was talking to me. Kareem was talking to me. And, and they were talking to me about this. And, and black dot, black dot, black dot. And mom would say, and I'm not, I never would do it. Mom would say, mom would say, Chip, if you're going to camp out there, you just go ahead and camp out there. But I am not camping out there. And then she would begin to say something wonderful about God. Something wonderful about his promises and the blessings of God. And she chose the right, better thing. The dominant image, the white slave, the unseen. That's where we abide and live. Amen? Amen. I remember saying as a coach to my players, and I remember that Smurf team that I had, and I would take them, <clears throat> and there was a lot of things that I learned now, but uh, I took them, I, we, we, we got a reputation of winning in our state, so I had to take them out of state. And I remember we went down to Louisiana, and we played down there, and we played all their state champions. We lined it up on a spring break where we played their previous 6A, 5A, 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A state champions. And we're just these little Smurfs. And, you know, getting off the bus, <laughs> it looks like all bat boys getting off the bus, you know. <laughs> and so we didn't intimidate anybody, but, you know. And so we beat the 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. And the last game of the trip was the 6A, Baton Rouge was down there. It was the LSU feeder school. Great banners everywhere. All the ex-pros that played and... <clears throat> here they are going to play the Oklahoma State champs, and, and even though they're a small, smaller school, but, you know, this and that. And so we're playing, and we're there, and, and it's packing out, and, and you can see the different sizes of the two schools and everything. And I could, in warm-ups and pre-games, I could just kind of tell that my guys were kind of forgetting and looking and seeing the banners and seeing the players and seeing all of the things around them. And I had to call a timeout and get them in front of them. You weren't there, were you? But I remember getting them in front of the uh, dugout, and I said, and I had to get them, I had to take them out of the perception that was wrong, that was in that situation. I had to take them out of the black dot of the negativity around, and I had to bring them over into the positivity, the white space. I had to take them from what was wrong about the situation of what was right about the situation. Are y'all with me? What, not what's wrong with you, but what's right about you. If we're going to get to where what God wants for us, that's, and not just right about us, but what's right about the other person, yeah. and not going around being the black dot police. <laughs> and I've been preaching on this for how long? Five months. Five months. And we have seen more results in our church than we have the whole time, in our ministry the whole time. And I, what, are, what are you talking about results? I'm talking about salvations, number one. People coming back, families, marriages, oh, love, love, love. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Will y'all please remember that the rest of your lives? And I'm sure you've had black dots come your way, and I'm sure they were tough, and I'm sure they were doctors or whatever, courts or... Whatever. But Jesus is still wonderful. Now that's going to be a choice that you make. And the Lord said to me that you determine how big or small those dots are. And it determines what your position, your the presence, right? Because think about Mary. There could have been a million black dots. She doesn't see them. She's in his presence. Seeking him. All she wanted, she didn't want to miss a word. What does Jesus say? Isn't that what Brother Hagin? What, is, what does the Bible say? And so I had, to, I had to tell them what was right about them. And I said, I said, let me tell you what you're not seeing. Because remember, 
The white space, the Lord told me, is the unseen. The black dots are the seen, what's in your face, what you can sense, what you can feel, what you can see, what you hear, what you read, what you post, what you all of those things that are in your senses. But the white space. So I had to take them out of the negativity into the positive. And so I started, I listened. Now, guys, look at me. And, and so I get them all. I'm down here now. <laughs> I said, <laughs> y'all remember the workouts we did in the, uh, in the, in the preseason in the old gym and the, and the cold? We didn't even the heat, turn the heat on in the Oklahoma January. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 5 a.m. in the morning. Remember the time? We'd work three times a day. Remember I'd do that until you threw up. Remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, why are you reminded? Yeah, you remember that? Do you think they did that? No. Okay. Y'all remember uh, three a days, this and that, and all the work that we have done? Have you remembered all? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just bringing to the remembrance of the good things that they have accomplished and done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said, and do you think that they have as good a coaching staff as you do? And you better answer this one correct. <laughs> no, they don't. That's what I'm talking about. And they all started grinning a little bit. And I got them back there. Okay? I got them back there. And so for us to have any kind of a chance to win, we had to have that per your perception determines the outcome of the situation or the circumstance. What's your perception or what do you see? Well, I see black dots. I see sickness. I see poverty. I see... What about the dominant image? What do you see? And getting in the Bible helps us to what we see. And wh what I had to do with them is to show them what was right about them and not what was wrong about them at that particular time. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Amen? Because some people live in a constant awareness of what's wrong with them. All you got to do is ask them, Hey, Richard, how's it going? And you... <laughs> Here it comes. Get your laundry list out. Because it's black dot this and black dot that. Not Richard. I'm just teasing. I'm talking about everything that's financially, physically. I'm talking about the relationship. What, what's wrong? Black dot. Black dot! <clears throat> but as believers, as ambassadors for Christ, God's representatives, we need to magnify what's right about God. We need to magnify what's right about us. We need to magnify what's right about them and others. Amen. Isn't Jesus wonderful? You know, when you find out what's right about you, it'll fix what's wrong with about you. What's right about us is the unseen, and that's where our true identity lies. Brother Hagen would always say this. He said, every believer needs to, to uh, you know, they get born again and then get an amplified Bible and, and build their foundation of, you know, the love and the love walk and find out who they are. Find out their true identity. One of the men who did that was a man named Mark Hankins. And he, <clears throat> I can do a Mark Hankins really good. And we're good friends. And uh, in Christ, ha, ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> but in Christ, he, he got a hold of that identity. And that's in the white space. Your true identity is there, not here. Not who the enemy is lying to you, what's wrong with you. What, what the world is saying about you. It's the true identity. The black dots is what you see in your face daily. Uh, what's wrong with us, what's wrong with others. It's the negativity. And that's why the Lord said fast negativity. And so we fasted negativity and after a week we saw, uh, well, after a week, hello, we're not stopping this train. So we said, church, you want to go on with us? Uh, yeah, we'll do it. Why did you make us do it? <laughs> and uh, so uh, we helped them along, and we, we were very positive. And um, I said, listen, if you only got better that much this week, way to go. Way to go. You're getting better. And... We're, we're st starting to see. Now we're, we're positioning ourselves in the right place like Mary did. And we're hearing clearly. 
and we're seeing more with them. And we're uh, lining up for what God has for us. And, and so I believe that God is, is getting this, uh, this message to the world. I'm the white slave. Is anybody getting anything out of that? And that's the white space is the unseen. It's where we belong. It requires faith. But how could you right? The unseen. But uh, faith pleases God. And so that's where, we, that's where we live and move and have our being. It's where the power of the local church is. We got a hold of a, of a um, prophetic word from Brother Hagin. In the last days, he will operate and show his power through the local church. Is that right or anything else added to that? But, uh, <clears throat> and we said, well, we're part of the local church. And this is where your true identity lies, moving out of the black dots of the seen into the unseen. And so that's where our true identity. And I thought about Jesus's identity and how he found his identity and expressed his identity and it was two ones who didn't understand because they're going by the seen but he's going by the uns oh come on now we're talking about this this white space and black dot we're talking about realms of the unseen and the seen now we're talking about positivity not negativity we have been living in this we have been trained this way don't play in the streets. You'll die, black dot. You see how we've been conditioned? Everything we've heard has been conditioned for black dot. Everything. We need to uncondition. Amen. Don't play in the streets so you can live. <laughs> but anyway... Jesus found his, let's look at it, Luke 4, 14 through 22. And Jesus returned the power of the Spirit, anointed, glory to God. He returned that way. And there went out a fame, a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. Click. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, everybody say custom. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. Now, Y'all know Guy. Now that you know Guy, how many went with Israel? So now you know who I'm talking about. And Guy is my guy. And now maybe your guy, but not as much as my guy. And he's the best tour guide. And I want you to know that I found that talent. We were, my, my youth group, or not youth group, we did, mom took a, a youth tour for the first time, and we got, uh, Ronnie Levy hooked us up with this guy, and he's never done it before. I said, we'll take him, we don't care, and it was Guy. But here comes Guy with all this knowledge, and he knows the New Testament just as much or better than we did. And he had it, and it was marked up, and I'm like, are you saved? And he goes, no. Because <laughs> he still lived in a kibbutz. And his job and everything depended on it. I said, I, I got you. I got you. And um, so Guy would show us these things, and this is what he showed me about this. He said, as it was discussing, he stood up to read. And he said, because he stood up to read, he had a very important role and part of that <clears throat> synagogue. And where you read, Corrine, uh, um, do you know what the name of that was that that that, well, they would stand behind it where they would read that scroll. But it was already predetermined on what they read yearly. Now, this is very interesting because now here this Jew who is born again. And he says, oh, my goodness, you want to talk about identity. And he stands up to read, click, and it was delivered unto him the book of uh, the prophet Isaiah and when he opened up the book, he found the place. He said, now that should not have been said there. He found it. It's already there. It's already there. So he found it. That was not custom. And so all, he's already offending those who were there, who were all about custom. So he finds where it was written. And if you go back, he's finding himself in the scriptures when he was a kid and read about that's coming to pass. And he finds a place where it's written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
Now, we know of the place this was at. We were there when they discovered that synagogue. We were the first ones there, and Guy and Mom got me to go in there. And there's all these uh, antique rules or ancestry rules or whatever, but they let me stand where he read it. I stood where Jesus stood. They gave me five minutes to do it. Our cameraman was out there, and the glory fell. We were all just going down. It was so heavy with his goodness. And I said, God, I said, Lord, I'm standing where you stood, and I want to say what you said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for you have anointed me. And he began to say what to preach to the gospel of the poor and, and, and sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the, to the captives and recovering of sight of the blind, to set the liberty, set them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And if it was to play basketball, he would have said to post up. And to score 30 points, whatever. If it was to run a business, he would have said it. Whatever your calling is. God needs anointed people, not just in the five-fold ministry. And he said, and it's important to say what you're anointed to do. And he said it to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister. Now, Here's what Guy brought out. And he showed us in all these synagogues, they would build a chair and they would put a chair behind where the reader would read. That chair was dedicated for God and nobody dared sit in that chair. Are y'all with me? Now knowing that, watch this. He closes the book. You know where he's at and there's a chair there. And he gave it again to the minister, and he what? Now, don't you think Jesus sat down a whole lot of times while all the stories in the Bible? Well, why didn't they mention when he sat down there? But it mentions it here. And there was only one place to sit down. And I said, God, do you think he sits there? He goes, yeah, I do. Now we know that all eyes were fastened on him, right? And they began to say, who is this? You know, aren't you the, the Joseph's son? Aren't you the one? Who do you think you are? I'm the son of God. I am God. And the identity, because of the unseen that they couldn't understand, and he was taking them there. Are y'all, y'all understand what I'm talking about? So your identity, True identity. What's right about you. Okay. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to take you somewhere. That was Jesus and his identity. And all through the scriptures, he would say who he was and, and what he would say and do. And so, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you want to talk about identity, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. Not imputing their trespasses to them. Not imputing their trespasses to them. And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. In other words, to say not imputing their trespasses to them is saying God is not holding your sin against you. If he was holding our sin against us, we would be in a world of hurt. And there would be no hope for us. But he's not holding on. Say God God is not not holding on. on. You want to know why he's not holding on? Because he wants a relationship with us. And have you ever tried to have a relationship with somebody who holds on and won't let go of stuff? It's impossible to have a relationship with somebody who won't let go. They won't let go of black dots. They won't let go. God said, I let go. Because we can have a good, thriving relationship. It's impossible if they are constantly bringing stuff up from your past of things that you've done wrong, whether it was decades ago. It's impossible to have a thriving, working, healthy relationship with that person. It's impossible 
with people who won't let go. Aren't you glad that God is not someone who won't let go? He let go because he loves us. And he proved it to us by giving his son who, who shed his blood and gave us the opportunity to repent. So that we could restore our relationship with God. Because he will not let go. Love never ends or comes to an end. Never fades out or burns out. Amen. That's how much he loves us. Because he wants a relationship with us. This is the white space he's talking about. Let go of the black dots. Let go of the black dots you have against other people. Let go of the black dots of the government. Let go. Jesus is wonderful. Have the thriving relationship that you so much desire with God. Amen. And if he let go for us, shouldn't we let go? Oh, come on. Shouldn't we live a life of forgiveness and compassion? Shouldn't we live a life of joy and freedom? Mark eleven twenty five 25 in the Amplified says, Click, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it. Do you all know what let it go means? What part of let it go do you not understand? <laughs> Mom is a professional let it goer. She's a Hall of Fame let it goer. Okay, she said the church has really got the forgiveness down, but there's another part of this. Oh, I've forgiven them. <laughs> and they'll tell you what, what it is because they haven't let it go. But God's let it go for you. Amen? He says, but we haven't got down yet the let it go part. We need to get better at the let it goer. Amen? What's that mean? Isn't Jesus wonderful? Hey, did you hear about blah, blah, black dot? <laughs> Isn't Jesus wonderful? What a great example of Brother Hagin, who lived it in his ministry still, still to this day, the legacy of it is impacting the world. God loved all four of those people that were involved in that. He didn't want any of them to perish. But one had knowledge. They had knowledge. The right knowledge and did the right thing. Isn't Jesus wonderful? I would try to talk, I, to this day, if you go up to mom and try to talk black dots of any kind, size, people, shape, whatever, Political, we got our rights. You know, love doesn't insist on its own rights. First Corinthians, I'm quoting the Bible now. Love does no ill will to his neighbor. Love is not touchy. And the closer you get to God, the easier these things become when you get yourself in the right position. Amen? Amen. But let's position ourselves, church. Let's get in the right, let's do what Mary did. Get in the right place. Let's do what Brother Hagen does. Let's do what Billy Brim does. And she, Mama would go to me and I'd say something and I'd go, Mama, you know, they said blah, blah. And she goes, Chip. I remember one time when I was first preaching and I would go and I'd sit with ministers and stuff and they'd say stuff and they'd go, go tell your mama, go tell your mama. She needs to know. So I went and told Mama. Oh, brother. Now, she's been taught by Mr. Whitespace himself. The mayor of Whitespace. Are y'all with me? And Mama became the governor. And uh, she'd go, Charles Kent Brim, the next time these ministers, I don't care if they're Rama students or not, look them in the eyes, and I am right now. It wasn't. It was them. Anyway. No, I'm kidding. And she'd say, you stand up from that table and you say, my mama has given me permission to leave this conversation. I'm like, 
and you leave that conversation because love does not give uh, ill will to his neighbor and love does not get is offended, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, you want me to give you a note? I said, I am not taking a note, Mom, from my mother. Excuse me, I have a note from my mother and my doctor to get out of PE. No, anyway. But you know what? That may not be a bad idea. Get a note from your pastor. I have a note from my pastor to leave this conversation right now. Based on 1 Corinthians 13. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Ha <laughs> ha! I love that about Mama. But, she, but every time I try to say something and go there, she would stop me and go, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, won't you? Oh, she married into this. Oh, let's pray for them. Oh, Chip, they need prayer. I know, I'm trying to tell you what they're not. I know they need prayer, but they need correction. I come from a, a champion line of that, and I'm, I'm making it my, gr my great quest. Amen? Amen? And so I am so glad that God let it go. So verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore on, your, on you Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now here's what's right about you. Are you all ready? Okay, this is the unseen. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, do you want to make, that's one of the greatest faith statements a believer can make. Why? Because you have eyes. You have eyeballs. And you can see. You know you so well, right? You have seen every one of your black dots. And you know your black dots. You know all your faults and you know your, all your imperfections. You were there when you sinned. You were eyewitness to the sin itself. That's, we, that's why it requires great faith to say, I am the righteousness of this is what's right about me. That's why there's no condemnation in the white space. The enemy's trying to get you over in the black mode. Not what's wrong with you, what's right with you. We're the righteousness of God in Christ. This whole chapter is the Spirit of God working through Paul to tell us the differences between the things which are seen and black dots and the things which are unseen, which are God, the dominant image. All right, let's back up to 2 Corinthians 4.16. Are y'all re ready? Therefore we do not lose heart. What does that mean? Don't give up or quit. Quitting is not an option. Even though our outward man, who's our outward man? The one we can see. Is perishing, yet the inward man, who's the inward man? Well, if the outward man is the one we can see, the inward man is the one we can't see is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us for a far more exceeding internal weight of glory. While we, who's we? Believers, while we do not look at the things which are seen. We do not look at the things which are seen. We don't focus on the things that are seen. We don't meditate on the things that are seen. We don't go by what the things that are seen. Here's the doctor report. That's a scene. Isn't Jesus wonderful? If Brother Hagen do it, Brother Hagen could do it. Then I could do it. Man, I love you guys right there. You three right there. Who's the oldest? That's what I'm talking about. You the baby? No, there's no babies there. Oh, there's a baby there. Hey, would y'all stand up? Y'all come up here. Come on up here. Get on up here. I want, now, here's what I want to tell you about these guys. What's up, my man? What's your name? Jakiah and 
Josiah, and give me a J, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Who are you? Come on, let me hold you, let me hold you, let me hold you. Now this is the J4. Well, we got a J5, don't we? And that's AJ Dad, right, Dad? I'm preaching this with every, I'm giving this Academy Award performance. <laughs> and I get a lot of judgy faces, especially around this area. And, <laughs> and the, the four J's here are just smiling and eating it up. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to, to thank you all for doing that, okay? And Lord bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. Amen. Man, man, I want to take y'all home. Yeah, AJ wouldn't like that. But while we do not look at the things which are seen, we do not look at the things which are seen, but we believers don't look at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Black dots are seen, white space eternal. Fasting negativity is helping us to move away from the black dots, move towards the great white space. Amen? Because that's where the impossible becomes possible. And live in this life whether it's corruption, whether it's, it's perilous times, right? And it says the earth will become dark and perilous times. But then there's going to be those who operate in the white space. Those are going to be the ones who do great things for God. Why not this church? Why not the AJ5? Glory to God. How do we make this move? Well, it requires faith and the continual confession of it and the practicing of it. You speak it. You say it. The Bible doesn't say you have whatsoever you thinketh. It says you have whatsoever you say it. So the continual, maybe you don't even believe it at the beginning, but the more you say it, the more it'll become reality to you. Amen? Amen. Jesus started from his beginning of the public ministry to the cross always confessing who he was, what he is, and his mission in life. I came forth from the Father and come into the world again. I leave the world and go into the Father. He that seen me has seen the Father. He that seeth me has seen him. He's talking unseen stuff right here. I come a light into the world, and whosoever believeth me or, or uh, should not abide in darkness or black dots, but should, uh, should not live, notice, or focus on black not, dots. But Jesus, glory to God, he left us an example, and if he did it, we can do it. Amen. Amen. Constantly confession, confessing who we are. And I started going through the scriptures, and I wrote a whole bunch of scriptures down right here. Beloved, we are the sons of God. That's the good thing. That's the right thing about me. That's the white space about me. I'm going over there. I don't know about you, but I'm not into perishing. I'm done with the black dots. They're not going to dominate my life. Well, I come from a long line of negative people. And, and, he said that to me today. Mark said that to me today. He had one line, and I bet we all have, and I had two. My dad's side, oh, my gosh, champion black dot police. Champion black dot. And so, but, but mama got a hold of this message from Brother Hagen. Who? The man who what? Isn't Jesus name? Was that a very easy time for him to say that? So he had to be spending time there. He had to know his true identity there. He had to know who he was like Jesus knew who he was when he sat down in the midst of all the scholars and everybody. This is who I am. This is what's right about me. Amen. By the way, the Smurfs, we won that game, and we went three years to, to, to uh, remember, on three years in a row to Louisiana and played all state champions and never lost once to any of their state champions. <laughs> to where they wouldn't invite us back anymore. They called a school from Lincoln, California. <laughs> Who would have known? No, I don't know that. That's not. 
Beloved, we're the sons of God. For as many are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Oh, this is good stuff. Now the devil and my flesh wanted me to camp out over here, but I'm going to camp out over here. For I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me in the white space, I abided in him. Much fruit is in the white space. You see how I'm just putting white space in there? Did y'all catch that? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. That's who I am, glory to God. All things become new. That's who I am. For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained them, that we'll walk in them. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation in the white space. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, the seen, but after the spirit, the non, the unseen. But of him you are... Uh, are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made into his wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. I've been redeemed. You are of God, little children. You have overcome, because greater is he in the white space than he that are in the black dots. (laughs) All these things, uh, we are more than conquerors to him that live in the white space. This is how I'm just, this is how I'm seeing it. I can do all things in the white space. Because your true identity, the white space is in him, in Christ. I can do all things there. That's where healing is. That's where prosperity is. That's where my calling is. That's where my calling is? Then what am I doing messing around with this? The Lord showed me later, he said, some people's, some people's black dot is so big that it is the dominant image. It is the dominant image. And therefore, on those people, that's where depression comes in. And, and the little white spaces in the corner are so small. Well, that's God. And they don't feel like he's even there or hearing them. You understand what I'm saying? And the dominant. But we're to have dominion. And it dominates. And then he showed me another one of lots of black sp- Looks like a shotgun spread. Like, you ever seen a sign, an old country sign that was shot with a shotgun? It's got all the pellets. Had, it, it, they weren't just huge, but there was a whole bunch of them. And to them, the dominant image was black dots. Not what it should have been. But we're going to choose. We're going to choose. Mary chose. Brother Hagen chose. Billy Brim chose. Chip Brim is choosing. A glorious church is choosing. Do y'all choose? Let's choose tonight. And because God didn't hold anything against us, we can repent for any black dots we've ever brought up, every black dot and that black dots we forgot about. And we can go on this quest, this double dog, triple dog dare and fast negativity. Come on, church. Yeah. We're to be different. Yeah. Fast negativity. Get it out of there. You want your family saved. Fast negativity. Watch what happens. Yeah. Praying from a position of black dots. Praying in care. Praying care-filled prayers. You should be praying from the position of white space. Amen. The law of spirit of life has made me free from the law of black dots. Amen. <laughs> oh man, I could go on. I got all these scriptures because I just been I've been meditating in these scriptures. Meditate and confess these things. For he hath made me uh, made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And as you read and meditate and confess these of who you are in Christ, they won't seem real. But don't give up. Don't lose heart. Yeah. Because it may not seem real to you, but they'll, be, they'll become more real to your inward man as you go. Yeah. These are mine. This is who I am. This is what I have. Wasn't that uh, Joel Osteen said? John Osteen. This is who I am. This is who the Bible says I am. And I'm going to camp out here. And I'm telling you, Candy knows, and, and, and uh, there's, just a, there's, a whole, uh, there's a whole bunch of people that, that live in this white space. They live the life of it. 
And over time, it'll become reality to you. So I'm giving you a uh, homework assignment to underline or highlight who you are and what you have in Christ. Amen? Amen. Will y'all do that? In Christ. Ha, ha, ha. What's right about us? Glory to God. So, uh, I thought about this and uh, something happened to my favorite college football team. So my dad raised me, and I'm, I'm just going to end it with this, but my dad raised me to love the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, and I understand that California is more about professional, but I'm telling you in the Midwest and East, college is huge. I mean, fan bases of 105,000. Uh, uh, Oklahoma now is near 92,000 in their stadium. And it's one of the smaller. They're going to the SEC. There's some in there that's 105. Your pro average is what? 65, 70, somewhere in there. I mean, and the pageantry and the, and the band and the cheerleading and the alumni and the colors. And, the, and you know, professional, you know, it's just it's advertisement. It's become real professional, blah, blah, blah. But, man, and so... I was raised in the pageantry, and we'd listen to the transistor radio before they were on TV. Bud Wilkinson and OU, and man, they had the longest winning streak. And so I go into the Barry Switzer years, and I'm growing up in championships and, and all of this. And, and not too long ago, Bob, you know, Bob Stoops comes along, and he was a, a, won a national championship. And then we handed it off to another guy, and something bad really, really happened in the camp. And uh, it's a new coach, but it wasn't him. It was an assistant coach, and it was some kind of a uh, racial thing. And that coach had been there, this assistant coach, for, uh, oh, gosh, 20-some years, loyal to the program, made a mistake, and it really wasn't from his heart. He just said something stupid that he shouldn't have said. And he gets out in the public, and, and the school's got to fire him. They just have to, even though... It wasn't his heart, and he messed up the whole bit. And Bob was no longer Bob Stoops, but he was like an ambassador. We're ambassadors. And you know, ambassadors don't go with their own agenda. They are taught how to act and taught what to say. And they're taught how to act. And I believe ambassadors for Christ are not negative. And I don't believe when you abide with God, there's no negativity in there. And so they didn't know what to do, and Sooner Nation divided, and it was not good for the culture of this program, which was built on the foundations of championships from the beginning of college football, hundreds of years. And it's coming; to, it may come down. And so they go to Bob Stoops, the living last legend of our coaches, because he's the one that hired him, and he loved that coach. And there's a split, there's a division, there's a division. That's the enemy, division. God is not into division, he's into unity. And Bob comes on the press conference and he's on, we're all listening. Everybody in Oklahoma and whoever was following was listening. This happened not too long ago. And he says, you know, he says, I love that man. I loved him and I hired him and he, and he babysit my kids and, and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Now he knows as he's speaking the board and the president and the dean of Oklahoma are listening. And he knows all the backing and the, you know the oil money and the, you know what I'm talking about, the oilies and the, we're talking about million dollar boosters that they'll just take their name off the building and immediately and they're I mean all this is hanging in the bounce he knows they're listening too because they have to be he says I hate it but he knows all Sooner Nation is listening and he says but it is what it is and we're going to move on well they try to get more out of him he said, I said, it is what it is. I don't like it, but we're going to move on. He says, champion program, move on. It's very simple. 
And the next day, it wasn't a candy. It was the next day, everybody, we're all good. We're moving on. We're moving on. And I mean the program, that's when the program gets Venables, and that's when the program, if you're in following anything, and it made a change, but it moved on. Listen to me. Black dots happen. I get it, and you don't like it. Are you with me? It is what it is. Let's move on. Don't stay there. Don't camp out there. Don't meditate there at negative. The money, the numbers, the relationship, the whatever. Don't camp out there. Get over where you belong in your true identity. And I was telling the people, I said, we had people in our church that come and said, we have stopped our counseling. We have been going to years of counseling because we realize that they are trying to keep us in the black dot. She said, we're free. They said, we're free. We no longer go to counseling. We're free. Why? The white space and the black dot. Isn't that awesome? Is God good? All the time. Now this may be dangerous because we've got a lot of preachers here. But if anybody's got anything and you believe it's from the Lord, I, I, I wish you to come up and, and, and add to it if you want to add to it. Yeah, are we, um, nobody? Nothing? Good? We're good? Dan? Candy? Anything about prayer that we can pray over this? Or Come on up here. There will be, trust me. My wife is a well, we all are prayers. Uh, well, I was just thinking about when he's talked about prayer. And he said, um, you know, well, Paul, Paul, I always say when I get to heaven, I want to see Jesus. And, and then I want to see my family, but then I want to see Paul. Paul understood the unseen. Yeah. He wrote the New Testament about the unseen. Mm-hmm. He understood oh, yeah. the things. That's why he could say, count it all joy as he's jumping off a ship that's going down. Yeah. Because he understood the unseen realm. There you go. He understood what God was telling him about his course and his yeah. life and that what he would complete, yeah. what he was supposed to do. And so then you look at the book of Ephesians, which Paul wrote through the inspiration of the, or the Holy Spirit wrote through Paul. And he talks about, he says, and if you're any followers of Billy, you know the Ephesians prayers. If you know anything about Brother Hagin, you know about the Ephesians prayers. And he said, he says in this one area, and Billy goes over it and over it, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's unseen. What he's saying is, get up above the situation, get up above all of the seen. black dots, the scene, and, and get up here. And this belong. is the position that you pray from. Yeah. You can't pray from down here. No, no, you can no. only pray from yeah. up here. Yes, yes, yes. Far above principality, power, might, dots. and dominion. But if you choose to be in the middle of all the black dots, then you can't pray far above principality, power, might, and dominion. Because that's what this whole Ephesians prayer is about. You being raised up. See, that's part of God's covenant plan. Your, your you, true identity is there with is the authority that we have over all the black dots that come. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Huh. And then he goes on to say in Ephesians 3, 14, because Paul's continuing to pray. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus, of whom the whole family in heaven, that he would grant you. Now he's getting ready to talk about all the white space that you can have. Go back and read these Ephesians prayers because that talks about all the white space that you're supposed to operate in. Well, let me back up here. What does he tell you over here in that, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints, that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power. Where is all of that? Not in the black dot but in the white space of God. And then he goes on, and this is all a prayer path. And then he goes on to say that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might 
by his spirit in your inner man. That only takes place in the white space. Far above. Because you've been raised up. Now you have a choice. When you step into the prayer room and when you walk throughout life, you have a choice. Are you going to stay down here? Are you going to raise up where you've been seated? Every single day, every moment. Nope, I'm going to be raised up. Because I'm far above principality power. And therefore, he strengthens my inner man. And I will know the length, the width, the depth, and the height of his love. Why? Because I choose the white space. I choose up here. And that's a whole, that's, that's that place of prayer. That's where we operate out of. When you get to that place in your prayer where you operate out of the white space, you're going to see things happen like you've never seen before. Because you're in the place that God can move. You're in the place that you're in connection. You're in partnership. You know, 1 Corinthians 1, 9 said that we are called into the fellowship. What does fellowship mean? Communion and partnership with God. In, that, in fellowship with Jesus Christ, in prayer, glory to God. And you know... I gave you a little golfer's clap, honey. Good putt. No, it was good. Uh, we live in a land in a time of the majority is negative. Right? So it's just the majority is negative. It is what it is. Now, back to the, the 12 spies and things. The majority had a negative report. The minority, the, the you know, the two spies said, God will surely fight our battles for us. But, but the majority, and the people believed the majority report. And the negative majority report affected their faith. It affected their faith, and it affected their lives, and it affected their outcome and their future. And for 40 years, they wondered. Because all based on a negative You want to stay in negativity? That's your choice. I love you and so does God and he'll never stop loving you. But if you want to, if you want to go for it, all that God has for you, no matter what the majority says about you, <laughs> and believe in God that he, he'll fight your battles. Amen. Amen. Because God said this to me about that. He says, when you believe what I say and you act on my word, in spite of the black dots, I will always intervene because I will always be on the side of faith. In spite of the black dots. That's how I'm living, in spite of the black dots. Amen? Amen. Did y'all get anything? It was quick. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Come on. We can sing. We got time. Yeah. Cindy, take it over. <laughs> oh dear praise the lord well did you receive that tonight church wasn't that beautiful chip and candace thank you so much for encouraging our heart i tell you that's that that's i've heard chip preach a lot of messages and some of them but that was <laughs> that was that was that that was a beautiful beautiful word and i tell you that that is transforming can i have an amen i'm talking about your daily lives where you live every single day so I know this morning we received that tri double, no, triple dog there challenge, the fast negativity, negativity for a week. And I believe, and I was talking to Chip about it, that this, I believe that after one week, that this is going to become a normal part of our lives. It's going to be, it's not like, okay, the week's over, let's dive into all the black dots. No, this is a part, this is a, a developing a lifestyle of living in the white space of God. And I know that we're on that path. So, Thank you so much, and thank you so much for receiving the Word of God tonight. Hey, before we go, we want to bless Chip and Candace with a, a beautiful love offering tonight. There's a few ways you can give, as you can see on the screen. If you want to give by cash or check, you can grab an envelope. You can drop it in that drop, drop box, or you could do what most of us do. We've got a church app around here. You can give on the church app or online, and I'm just going to give mine tonight just to show you that if I can do it, you can do it, right? You clip on the church app, and then there's a space that says give, 
I click onto that, and you can it shows the amount, and then I click on next, and then it asks me if I want to. Uh, I click on the general there, and it drops down, and it says guest. I click on the guest because we're blessing our guest tonight, and it says, and then I go to next, and then and then it says here as it's going, um, do I want to pay for the thirty cents? Yes, and then and then give now. I click on the give now. Thank you. Your donation and, and offering has been received and we're processing your donation. So that's how you do it. Hey, if I can do it, I know you guys can do it as well. But thank you so much for honoring uh, God with your giving of your tithes and offerings. Can you give Chip and Candace another round of applause? We love you guys. You guys are dear to our hearts. Thank you so much for that. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. You are dismissed.